Oh, Paul, where are you? Are you on vacation somewhere? I wish. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> We have a palm tree going in the backyard, but it is about three degrees here. Hopefully it doesn't sleet or rain on me, but... Uh, you know, you got to get out of the house somehow. So here we are. I'm steps from our back door, but here we are. I'm, I'm safe. I'm socially isolated. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're down. I'm heading outside. Yeah. Um, so, listen, uh, you had a good conversation with one of the Canucks' um, biggest players this year. Some might argue that, you know, up there in the, in the top three for MVP. And uh, Mr. Miller had uh, plenty of interesting to say about how his opinions have evolved over the last, uh, shall we say, three weeks. Yeah, right, Paul. I mean, uh, if you dial it back to March 8th when the Canucks were having a game day skate at Rogers Arena, it turned out to be our last availability with the players. They shut the doors that night. Uh, Columbus was down. I went over to Miller and asked him, I said, you know, what do you make of this coronavirus? He says, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what to tell you. I, I wish I had a better answer for you. Well, today in a conference call, uh, JT Miller was, was pretty uh, open and honest about the impact of the coronavirus. He said he's lucky enough that none of his immediate family here in Vancouver or back in Pittsburgh have been affected by uh, COVID-19. But with two young daughters aged one and two, I mean, health is number one. It's a big reason he stayed put. And it's a big reason why he's, he's just doing everything he can uh, to kind of process what's happening right now. I mean, all the machinations that are out there right now about what might happen to the regular season, what might happen to some sort of a revamp playoff format. Uh, he said that, you know, it, it kind of drives you a little bit batty. I mean, it's great to spend quality time with your family, uh, especially when you have young daughters and you can only watch, I guess, so many Disney movies and, and do chalk and puzzles and things of that nature. But I think uh, Miller's biggest concern is the fact that he wants to make sure that if the season does resume, uh, that the, there is a regular season because it would be fair to those teams on a percentage bubble who wouldn't get in, like the Winnipeg Jets, who were one of the hottest teams down the stretch before this thing was put on hold. So that was interesting. He doesn't have much of an appetite for playing hockey in August. Uh, and we know with the increased measures now, with the self-isolation period for NHL players has gone from April 6th to April 15th. And it'll probably go to April 30th pretty quick here. Because we're not, we're not talking weeks now, Paul. We're talking months until this thing yeah, is yeah. back on the track. And none of us really know how that's going to look. I just had a conversation with Ed Willis about this. And to be honest with you, we're all reading between the lines. But if you look at what, um, there's two facets to this for the Canucks for me. And one of them is if you look at what the provincial health officer said uh, over the last couple of days about perhaps relaxing the, um, the, the guidelines that they've put on us, and that's just relaxing them, um, maybe by summer. Uh, that to me says... You know, you might see gatherings of 50 or more people. She talked about getting a vaccine, Ben. I, I don't know that they're going to let 19,000 people back in arena until they have a vaccine. And that could be after Christmas next year. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, the original time frame was that uh, the self-isolation period, the initial one, was going to end March 27th. And the Canucks would go back to the facility in small groups and work out in small groups on the ice. Well, the whole social distancing edict has scuttled that. I mean, this gathering with small groups, well, I don't think you can have any kind of a situation with professional athletes where they're going to gather in any kind of a situation to work out or skate for, again, not weeks, months. So we know what's at play here. I mean, there is something with the integrity of wanting to finish the regular season. There's a billion dollars in revenue that could be lost if the season is scuttled. There's escrow going up to 30%, and we don't know where the salary cap's going to be next year, but... Uh, you know, there's a certain level of greed when you're an owner and you have a viable product that brings in a lot of money. But uh, like JT Miller said today, all that stuff is moot. It's all about the safety out there. Players want to be healthy when they come back. They don't want to get into a playoff format where everything's ramped up because the first thing we know, they're going to be injuries. Guys are going to be yanking groins left, right, and center. And it, it really kind of defeats the whole purpose of what you want in a playoff tournament. You want to have some semblance of a regular season. I'm not so sure they're going to have it, though. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know where else we go with this because I, I'm starting to be more concerned about training camp than, than the Stanley Cup this year. But I guess we just have to wait and see. Um, now, the other thing we wanted to talk about was our Canucks at 50 uh, series, which is sort of wrapped up, a season-long venture. <laughs> I didn't think we'd ever see the end of it, but here we are. Uh, we've got some other stuff which we'll do sort of informally to extend it. But when we were looking at the 50 moments, 
Uh, it was funny that we ended up really with Elias Pettersson's first season, which really, like his first game, was a massive harbinger of what was to come. You know, that first goal, the first shot, everything. Um, tell us about the piece that you wrote and also, you know, your impressions of, of w- what that start was for Elias Pettersson. Yeah, you know, when you go back and look at that night, sometimes you have to, it's like watching a really good movie. You have to see it again and you pick up little nuances. It wasn't so much the first shot in the first game and the first goal. It was the fact that Pettersson was smart enough to, to look off uh, on a 2 on one and buy a fraction of a time to score that goal. And people tend to forget that. He also set up Nikolai Goldobin with a ridiculous blind pass to make it 2 nothing. And I just think when he went back to the bench after scoring his first goal, and there was this little kind of head nod and smirk, that kind of like, hey, you know what? I can do this. And that turned into five goals in five games, 10 goals in his first 10. And everybody was curious about this kid on the West Coast who not only showed he had game, but he could play. And I think what made the season so endearing is the fact that, you know, he had some rites of passage. He had the concussion. He had the knee injury. He had 10 games without a goal. He had one in 11 games in the last uh, month of the season. So he went through a lot. But at the end of it all, he was the unanimous choice for the Calder Trophy because I just think that when talking to people like Thomas Gredean, who told me, listen, um, he didn't have to transition to the NHL. He's playing the same way he played in Sweden because that's where the game is going. So when Pedersen arrived here, he already had that going for him. And more importantly, he had a sense that he was something special. Uh, there's, not a, you know, there's not an ego attached to all that. He's very humble. Uh, he's, very, he's great at how he formulates answers. He, he's really thoughtful for a guy who struggled with the English language initially here. And uh, to just see a kid grow the way he did from October to April, it was, it was really something... Uh, it made for a really good piece, and uh, boy, what, what a way to tie it all up. Yeah, well, thanks for doing this, Ben. we got a lot more that we can kind of kick around over the, the next couple of weeks. It looks yeah. like we're going to have to look back a little more than looking forward because we just don't have those answers. But thanks for your stuff there, everyone. You can read Ben's stuff at theprovince.com, vancouversun.com. We'll be back to do these videos hopefully every day for you.